the game in Nogi. So, so Adele's on the side, and one of the common things is I've got head control. Uh, we're going to start with, uh, as a general rule, a uh, schoolyard or, or a fight, we have what we call hard wiring in us. And it, believe it or not, it's designed to protect us. It might not seem like it is, but it's designed to protect us. So the concept behind this is, I'm always going to pull my partner tighter to me, which means that it's harder for her to generate power to punch me and to hit me. It also means that any time that she tries to get up to step over, I can start to manipulate her so she always has to have her hands onto the ground. Schoolyard headlock, right. So can I get you onto your knees? So this is kind of how it happens. Forms go there, forms are like there, like yeah. And she goes on top, she's like, yeah, I'm not told. Yeah. So number one is this. I can't really do much damage to her now. Right. And she's aware of that, but she's got to be aware of other options and possibilities. So first things first is Adele's left hand is going to come over my shoulder and form a fist. Her fist is going to try and come on my carotid closest to my jaw. It has to be a fist pinky down, so the blade of the arm is sticking into my neck. And number two, her right hand goes on top of her left hand and she starts to push it down. The biggest fault I see people do right now is they try and lift their head up. As I lift down, I can start to roll her. Does that make sense? So instead of trying to lift her head up, she pushes both of the hands down into my neck as hard as she can. Now, this is causing pain. At the same time, instead of lifting her head up, she drives her head more towards my shoulder, which puts pressure on my shoulder like a chibora. Okay, I can go two choices. I either keep holding the head and get a sore shoulder, or I try and run away and let go. Most people are going to go, ha ha, run away. She's trying to capture the arm. Now, this is a key part. Like this. I'm generally going to try and do one of two things. The most common things out of fight or flight is flight. So I want to try and turn and run this way. So she's got to make sure she's got her elbow behind my back like the thinker position. So if I try and turn, I can't turn. Secondly is her right knee's behind my back. So if I try and turn into her, it's easy to upgrade to knee right or mount, plus there's a wedge behind my back. So let's have a look at that again very quickly. So start off, you guys can do the start position, but we'll just start from here. And we're going to give a little bit of a squeeze, people. And we go, hand comes down, hand comes down. Make sure it's in between my arms, not laced through. Yeah, because I'm going to fight you, so it goes in the inside. Don't lift your head up, you push down and drive your head towards my shoulder. On the turn, you've got to capture the arm. Make sure you're in the thinker position. Right, put our knee on from here. Right, I'm just going to stop in this position here. The most common thing now for anyone that does grappling is arm bar. I'm going to hold my arm together. For people that don't do grappling, they're going to try and get their elbow, the hands are done, they're going to try and sit up. By the way, we're going to not change our game plan. We're attacking the arm because the arm's what we're after. Okay, one, two, three. I'm going to have to get that video a lot. <laughs> What's up, my flash? <laughs> when we're doing this, um, I've got a girl's head. I'm, I'm not, I'm not trying to, oh, she's not trying to hurt me back. I don't have to explain. So what I'm saying is some of you guys, when you're coming over the hand, you're kind of putting your elbow closer to my neck and you're trying to get together. That means I get access to your hand. Where if you have your wrist on my neck, I don't really get access to the wrist. So, and this is more painful because it's a larger area and you've got pressure. So if you double your hands up, it's two hands pressing in. But if you put your elbow in there, there's this whole chance I can start to manipulate. So I, I, it's not about payback. We're going to get payback, it's going to come, but we'll all want the risk. Secondly, it's got to be the blade. And the way I, the way I got taught it was, we're going to push it into the neck and we're going to push the neck away. So it makes my neck open. So this means that everything's exposed. This means that if I miss her, she goes down and push in. Now she drops her head towards my armpit. This really like, it's almost like a kimura and I am definitely going to react to it. As I come over, catches, think of position. Right. Two most common things is either cup here or scramble. Because we're going to be dealing with more of the BJJ, less of the um, uh, real life um, on the street scenarios, we're going to concentrate on this. So first thing is I cup this. This means that two things. But right, is I'm not escaping, I'm holding my position. She's got time to play now. So her uh, left hand sits on my jaw, she pushes my jaw up and goes that over here. Steps over the left leg. Now this is the most important part is we're going to put our hands onto our opposite shoulders. One and two. So now my arm's pointing V 
and it's hard for me to rescue. Number two, knees squeeze together and we do what we call zip up, up on our jack. So it should be just zip up and that makes it hard. So the course is shoots here, five times turn to rescue. I only get to back here. Secondly, is even if I might, I'll do the hitchhiker. As she leans back, it's totally around me. Right, once she's got the knees squeeze, if it's legs over, I can use my hitchhiker to manipulate my hips. When the legs here, I can't manipulate my hips, so the hitchhiker is not as good as that state. Again. So don't worry about the payback, you're going to get it back. So wrist on the glider, double it up, push down, slide high, head goes to the ceiling, catch the arm. Then you're onto the side, keep the position. Right, so make sure I can't scramble. Then the rule is this, you got it. Trap set, you're done. Okay, push down my face, step over here. So now, knee squeeze. We're going to go shoulder to shoulder, and I've got to um, try and arm curl a gal who's roughly about 65 kilo. <laughs> so, a gal, a gal slowly does the zipper up on the jacket. Yep, that's pretty much it. Um, I forgot I've got a torn bicep. That's probably not the best. Um, I normally tap super right, so that's not the best arm, but you understand the concept. So why don't you try to use the outside extension and you aren't trying to arm curl 60. 68 kilo, look at the tank on her. Right. Where if I'm here, I can definitely arm curl, I reckon I can arm curl at least 70, 80 kilo like this, or at least hold it. So once, the, once that goes past that zone there, it's a whip. Once on the inside that 90 degree, it's stronger for me. So you'll always make that go past that, go past that 90 degree. Okay, one, two, three. <laughs> So, um, just watch my hand position, guys. Oh, so, she's got my head from here. And so, one thing that I want to do, and I'm, I'm kind of, um, when I'm here, it's this, and what I'm doing is um, I'm compressing her neck into the ground. So, what I'm saying, you guys, when you go like that, you try to push your weight. I compress, so when I come through from here, I'm over. And now, what I'm doing is, I simply just start to, I, I'm trying to be super nice, but this is probably, yeah, I start to simply So what you guys are doing is you're kind of here and you're here, so you're on the jaw. I've kind of got on that little, of what that karate area, and I've double. So what I'm saying to you is, I'll push down now, yeah, but if I come up and push down, so I'm just kind of, I'm sliding up here. Yeah. Um, now I'm going to get back my foot up. So, um, <laughs> that's right, that's right. so, as she comes to my head, right, so just come down the side so you guys can So first things first is it's, we're, we're journey down the body a little bit, which makes it slightly harder to do. So as I come over here, what I'm saying, guys, you kind of come into to that zone. I want it to be in here, so that when I push down on the neck, right, it's basically, there's, there's, um, there's nothing on the neck. So when I push down the neck, collapses. Yeah, okay, like just the neck collapses. Right. So, one, two, and as I collapse the neck and I drive forward, it's pretty much, right. So, uh, well say it's not the payback. I'm not trying to cause the pain on her. I'm trying to damage her structure. So, you can have a look here. So, her head's on the ground. I'm trying to get this, this space on her neck here. Mm -hmm. To go to the ground, and the only way that's going to happen is if I like push down on the neck, which is going to cause pain. So mm -hmm. a lot of people on the jawline, that there's a structure running through the jawline already is painful, but it's not going to do too much damage. Once I go over here and I push down, like it, it's a huge difference. Secondly, is sorry, I'm going to try not to do that. Is that she grabs my head? So one, two. The thing about this is, is I'm, I'm, I'm so you guys kind of going that way. I'm kind of coming. <laughs> This way. So I'm squeezing my shoulder and I'm pretty much going to get a shoulder off from that. Yeah. Right? So it's pretty much a shoulder off right there. So it grabs me, 
Okay, so hand comes over, my hand comes on the inside, okay, so that's pretty much. Poor Marty. Guys, that's me, I'm still not doing it hard, guys. I'm still not doing it hard. Okay, <laughs> if you just correct, that's the reaction you're gonna get. Okay, slow, one, two, three. I made right. sure it was a good angle too. So she's got me in the headlock position. And once again, so I come on the jawline, I swim through, I come on the jawline, and I drive, and I push, and I go hard. So she pops her head, and I go. So I'm saying she goes, I'm in danger. So she starts to scramble to try and get up. So as she posts and comes up, come here, this is, I slide, and I catch. And then, one, two, and then But I put that leg through. Which makes it harder to see this one here. If she turns her palm up and slides away, this is the air, right? That's the stack, and if I catch it this way, just like, yeah, all of a sudden, so like, you can't do that. So it's the reverse one. So for me, right, um, the way I like to do this is I try and bring my feet together and I walk. I get like a little, but I, I, I might tap the bow, not what it's about, but I can now control my partner to go to my wrist locks and things. So once I've got this lock on, if you are like, I'm going to slide it that way, just stop me from sliding that way. Yeah, no. So once I'm here, it's this really good control that I have to put her in position. That's a really bizarre one. Now, like, I haven't seen some of the guys teach that off the, off the acoustic system. Yes, the arm drop, and just basically, and they're like, Whoop! and exposes everything away. So, um, uh, yeah, different, hey. <laughs> I was like, wait, wait. One, two, push, catch it. So she's here. So as she comes up onto your arm, I hold it. Sit. Bring it. Walk it in. Extend. Whatever you guys want to do. Arm um, keep short. Smell that arm. Um. <laughs> so I got this. That control. So that will allow me to put her where I want her to go. Or you could just do a back choke. <laughs> so the hardest part is that once the arm's popped, right, and I'm, I'm here, is I've got a puppet. So I cup it to catch it. One, two, three. Okay. So I just covered down. Uh, so uh, on the side, head control, ball shank, uh, so jaws of life, smash it, smash it, smash it. Go on, tap the arm, she comes up, tap the arm. Uh, the closer to the wrist, the better, because that's going to make her arm go the way I want it to go, closer to here. Uh, I sometimes struggle, so you see it here. So slide, one, two. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to hook it. Yes, you can, but that's going to extend to the arm bar. So, and I've still got the lock on it. So, the way the, the, the thing I've got taught about this was a guy called the Reverend. Right. So he goes, he goes, you go pressure, pressure, pressure. They go, no way. They put the arm back in to get it, grab the wrist, and you the wrist lock straight up. So he's going, kick, 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 kick. They go, no way. Just hold it here. And just, the wrist lock is legit. But it is so good. I thought you were going to bicep flex. I know, not the wrist lock. Because if you've got, if you've got a flexible wrist, then I just take your uh, forearm over my shin and I bicep slice you. And I can kind of come over and bicep slice this way as well. Like there's a whole bunch of stuff. But, yeah. Um, but the wrist lock was, because no one expects that. Aha, uh -huh, they got out, come in, so it's bang, it's on. Okay, um, we're going to rush to the next part. And, um, when I first got for this, um, the, what I want to do is what we're going to do. What I'm going to do is, or what I want to teach us is what I'm going to teach us. Because um, from my experience in coaching this, it's about 30% of people get the technique right. Not for any other reason, it, it, it's how you put the pressure. So a lot of people are going to, they're going to get the result that I want, but they're not going to get the, the finish that I want. So 
So it goes into a back. Um, so uh, it's uh, guillotine from the wrong side, right? So it's pretty much up past the guard. She kind of goes over, guillotine, and I'm caught here. So what I got taught originally was my hand comes under, I put my palm onto her back, I switch my base, and I go one foot style choke. Easy peasy. So I start with this. So she catches the hands together, so my palm goes through, and I catch the back, her back which means that my face is in position. If my arm's here, it's not in position. So I catch her back. I, I slide extend my left leg, and I try and drive my shoulder in. So I, as I lift my head, I get like a Kimura on the shoulder plus a one point style choke. One, two, three. Um, I'm kind of going overtime. Okay, so she catches the wrong side guillotine, and my coach goes here. I'm like wicked. I catch her. I'm here. Adele just goes. You know what? I'm going to slightly walk my legs away from Adam, and like this, and I'm going to start to get the roll over or bridge and roll, or whatever. So down for the bunnies. My hands put under. She can roll me over. She can come to her knees. I've got no control of it. That's a good bait, but once my heart's caught behind the head, sometimes if they're really strong and really stubborn, I find it quite hard to finish. This was a better option for me. Okay, so she goes guillotine. First things first is I go like this. And this works better when the guillotine's on, so just be careful. Then what? My hand goes over. I bring my hands together. I slide into a shoulder shrug and I lift my head. So I'll kind of go here, shoulder shrug, and what will happen is it's going to put a close this amount of pressure on the shoulder. She'll generally try and pull the arm out. If she's got her hands committed to the tilt, she can't pull the hands out. So it's not going to be shoulder shrug. So from here, so I'll kind of go, I'll get the bait, roll over. So my hands come in, one, two. I want to close the gap. So what I'm doing is I bring my hands together. And I squeeze. This is better. Uh, so I slowly squeeze my shoulder with my head. And that's pretty much it. Super tight. Marco, come here. Where's the pressure? Where's the pressure? I'll show you in a second. Damn it. <laughs> right, well, because it doesn't like I'm doing anything. Right, it does like I'm doing everything. It's not like there's no line. Yeah. So it actually goes, he goes to the team side. This took help. So one, two. Right. So what I want to do is, is I come up the top. First things first is my hands are wide. That's too much play time. So I bring my hands in. Um, so it works best and better when they commit to the I'll explain the parts so I see people do it wrong. So as it goes to the team, number one is when they do this, they try and come to the head, which exposes the arm so the arm can pop out. Yeah. So what I try and do is I try and go one and two. Right. Now I try and bring my hands together. I'm done here. <laughs> so I try and bring my just a little bit. So one and two. So they're together. Squeeze and lift my head. Yeah. Um, so the way that the more that they have committed to that guillotine, I always go over. The more that they pop it, I've still got the arm to attack. But I find the one under the three style, if they roll me, I don't have anything to come back to. I've kind of lost the whole system. So for me, it's about it to come over the top and, and do that. Uh, who does that, that, that whole stuff? Oh, right. Lou, Lou Ferrigo. Lou Ferrigo. Okay, one, two, three. Hey, I didn't get to what I wanted to do tonight. Um, so I, I wanted to go through the Kimura finishes of uh, when they pop the arm, uh, the guillotine. Um, and I also wanted to go through the guillotine defense when you're inside their guard and I throw the guillotine on you as well. Um, so what we'll do is we'll have a look at that on Thursday. Um, so we'll rehash some of the old school stuff and um, we'll, we'll kind of put it into a bit of a game plan. Um, and the, the way that um, the way that I normally do it is can I have your two hands, please? Is so that um, I, I can kind of make her, or, or I, I can kind of almost make her guillotine me um, on the wrong side of my entrance. 
so I kind of arm here, and I should, and she goes back, but so I just kind of tap the mate on the boat, get a team on the wrong side. Mm. So, you know, like, like, there's ways that I can make her, make her uh, get me to do what I want, uh, and it goes onto her back. If I'm passing the guard, I'll pass the guard and I'm using like a, a really powerful head drive guard past the shoulder like I'm here. So, oh, so she wraps it and instead of letting her go to the guard, I'll push it. So this is the, the position we're here, right? So one, two, squeeze. So we've got we've got ways to get to the positions to go there. Um, but I've got it, like the reason why they don't face palm in a push way is I've got the shoulder control, I've got the back of my head exposed. Like, as I go past the front of my head, they've got something to push off. I'll, I'll explain that on Thursday. Um, and then um, the, the, the other one is just based, like if we're, if we're on our knees head to head, and this is kind of um, experience versus non experience. So, in general, I kind of go skin down, head off. Uh, and I step up to throw. All I've done is going to do, she's going to like throw all the ball back to like, you know, so, and I'm on the ground. Like, I don't want to get, I don't want to kind of let go and get exposed my back. I don't want to go, ha ha, and run and, okay, you know, so I'm going to do a thing where I'm going to go like, I'm just going to squeeze her head, I'll try and get something. So, all of a sudden, we're back in the game again. One, and I'm like, oh man, two, oh, I'm like, this is it, yeah, and all of a sudden, the game changes. So instead of just kind of going, we're going to do these techniques, we do some emphasis on Thursday and how we get there so that we can start to set our grips up and all that as well. Uh, are there any questions before we finish up on, the, on those techniques, guys? Okay, line up, one, two, three.